Clotho the Spinner, Lachesis the Allotter, and Atropus the Inevitable. Three names that might not mean a whole lot to most people, but these make up the three sisters of fate, the Morai, or the Mire, if you want the Greek pronunciation. The sisters were the children of Zeus and Themis, which does explain their gift of prophecy. They may not be the exact same thing as the oracles, but they played an important part in helping their mother decide the future of humanity. There is some discussion, however, of Nyx perhaps being the mother of the sisters, but Themis seems to be the goddess that most poets agree on. They controlled what was known as the Thread of Life. When man was created, they began to spin this thread. It would then be measured and cut, which predicted someone's life from birth to death. It followed all of the steps they took, all the actions they made in their life, and all of the consequences that then followed. It was essentially a prophecy of every human life that was symbolized by pieces of thread. Once you reach the end of a thread, that symbolizes the end of that individual's life and this was thought to be a very rigid system that could not be cheated nor changed. Unless you were Zeus, of course. His relationship with his daughters meant that he could extend or shorten the life of his allies and enemies. The Morai themselves would rarely intervene in human affairs, nor did they choose who died and how. Humans still had the freedom to influence the details of their own death. The Sisters of Fate just knew when someone's time had come to an end. They were often accompanied by several deities and spirits, and using the laws governed by their mother Themis, they would assign the appropriate entity to one's death. If you were destined to die a gruesome death in battle, then they would send the Keres. If you committed crimes against humanity and the gods, then they would ensure that the Irinis were dispatched to inflict the correct punishment. And the same can be said for birth, as they were accompanied by Elithea, one of the goddesses of labour and childbirth. In terms of appearance, they can sometimes appear as young women, but most of the time they were more your stereotypical crones, old ugly hags who would be seen measuring and cutting the threads of life. Sometimes all three sisters were shown with scepters and crowns, and other times they had varying trinkets from scales and sundials to wax tablets and scrolls. They were mentioned by numerous poets, and do feature in several stories outside of their main duties. They took part in the war between the giants and the gods, even killing two giants known as Thun and Agrius with bronze maces. Now this is something that I definitely found rather amusing, the image of three elderly women who could barely walk, beating giants to death with maces that they could probably just about carry. There is also some mention of the Morai in relation to Typhon. When Zeus was in pursuit of Typhon, the Morai deceived him by offering him fruit that would make him stronger. The fruit of course had no effect, and did nothing but buy Zeus the time needed to find Typhon. One of the few times that we see the Morai intervene in the affair of mortals is at the command of Hera, who orders them to stop Heracles being born. With aid from Elithea, Heracles' mother Alcimene is stuck in an endless birthing process. However, Alcimene's midwife, Galantheas, visits the Morai, telling them that it is the will of Zeus that Heracles must be born. This distracted them long enough for Heracles to be born, but the midwife would pay quite a steep price for deceiving the gods. The sisters transformed her into a weasel for her deceit, but this wouldn't be the end of the punishment. In order to mate, she would have to be mounted through the ears, and she would give birth through her throat, essentially vomiting out children. Quite a grotesque punishment, and one which shows the Marai should not be trifled with, but I guess you also have to give it to them for creativity. It also wasn't all bad for the midwife turned weasel, as the goddess Hecate took pity on her, and made her one of her sacred followers. The Morai are this interesting combination of prophecy, life, and death. They have an extremely important role that other deities may not necessarily be trusted to perform, and for the most part they do remain impartial. If you have enjoyed the video, then leave a thumbs up and consider hitting that notification bell so you know when videos are uploaded. As always, I've been your host, Mythology and Fiction Explained.